everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Now that we've covered the Friendship is Magic series and the Equestria Girls movies, now we're going to tackle the biggest project for this franchise today, My Little Pony, the, the movie. movie. The first ever theatrical movie of Friendship is Magic. It takes place right before season eight as the main six must travel outside of Equestria to find the Hippogriffin Queen that will give them the key to saving the land from the Storm King. Mm-hmm. So, so this is the finally, first, this is the first time they went outside of a question because remember, even just seeing ponies mm-hmm. all everywhere they go, ponies, ponies. But now you're seeing other creatures, you're seeing lizards and cats and griffins and stuff, all these different creatures now that you know there's actually something else beyond that now. Exactly. <laughs> so, we have been looking forward to seeing this for a while, mm-hmm. and we finally got to rent it to see if we wanted to buy it. and we were very, very pleasantly surprised. Right. Uh, first thing we saw, you know, like from the trailers, were the difference in the animation. Now, clearly, they couldn't do flash animation for a theatrical movie because I know people probably asking why does it look like that. Mm-hmm. So they had to blend it where it looks a little bit three D, but it's keeping the designs of the original show intact. Yeah, and I was disappointed with the animation only because they showed this great animated cover and we were thinking, Oh wow, they went all out for this animation and then we see it and it's like wow. that looks nothing like the cover. It so that was does. my only disappointment is that I really thought they had stepped it up to mm. you know, to the stratosphere. Mm. But the animation they did was really nice. You just aren't getting what you see on the cover. Right. And they still had the original voice cast because mm-hmm. what well, they made it look like uh, from when it, they first announced it that it was going to be all celebrities doing the voices. But mm-hmm. they kept the original voice cast to do the characters from the show. And when new characters were added, that's when the celebrities came in. Right. Okay, there's one other thing that, well, it's kind of a spoiler, but it's not a big spoiler. Why did you not put Discord in this movie? Yeah, I remember they they they. It looks like they kind of hinted at it when they made a little balloon and it was shaped like him, and mm-hmm. then it popped. So I'm like, was he like busy or something? Maybe you could have used him, or maybe that would have been too easy. All you do is snap his fingers, and the threat's gone. So yeah. that made the movie like two minutes long. <laughs> and like, oh no, it's out. oh okay, and then they're gone. <laughs> but Discord, John Delancey, you were missed in this movie. First thing we were saying is, where's Discord? After we saw the others, where's Discord? So, right. if you make another theatrical movie, don't skip adding Discord to the cast. Right. Well, probably because they had all these celebrities in there. They had uh, Tay Diggs mm-hmm. and there's, and what's her name? S I A, was it Sia or Sia? Sia. Sia. Mm-hmm. They had quite a few uh, stars in this movie playing both, you know, heroes and, and villains. They did. Tay Diggs' role was really good. Mm-hmm. The character was good. And yeah, you're right. They did have some additionals, but I still think they could have afforded John Delancey. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> or maybe Canadian. Maybe they're all Canadian celebrities. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I have to check on Tay and Sia. But I have to say, again, we were very pleasantly surprised. And um, in case you don't know and you're new to watching the series, Bennett. You have to see this movie before you can go to season eight. Yeah, because you, you know how every season kind of has like a two-part, it's usually a two-part serious finale and a two-part serious opening. Mm-hmm. Well, this movie serves as a giant opening and you had to go exclusively to the theater to see. Right. And then you get to season eight and then it's a lighthearted opening. It's like, yeah, you already had this. I don't think it would be fair to have that. And then it's even more serious than you get to the show. And it's like, it's like it never ended. <laughs> But I think it was really brilliant marketing. It was. They have a big enough fan base, loyal fan base, that they knew they would see the movie Mm -hmm. in the theaters and or on DVD and connected to having to see season eight. And soon as season eight starts, and how we found out was indirectly, we went to watch season eight on television, and suddenly they started talking about characters we had no idea they were talking about, whom they were talking about. And they went somewhere, and first thing Rascal said is, we got to see the movie. You got to see the movie. You can't watch season eight without the movie. Yeah. And we turned it off. Yeah, because they were talking about 
all these different yeah, it's the new characters and stuff and mm-hmm. new creatures and it's like oh wait they were all introduced in the movie because right. that's the first time they went outside of a question so now you got all the all the rest of the world to see now so yeah we almost got spoiled like dang it turn it back before right. we see some of your great and it was a really great concept really good characters they're adding that um are beneficial to the storyline in the My Little Pony mm-hmm. regular series. So tell them more about the movie. Mm-hmm. I avoided saying this is awesome. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well they meet like I said, we, they meet lots of new characters, and like one of the first stuff they go to is this, I guess, desert town where it's inhabited by lots of lizards, amphibians, mm-hmm. fish with legs, and then you got one cat. I'm surprised hasn't tried to eat any of them, <laughs> and he gives you. Uh, reminds you of Nick Wilde from Zootopia. He's this mm-hmm. giant cat, but he reminds you of Nick. He wasn't a thief, but he I thought he was a pirate at first because he kind of looked like one, mm-hmm. but they didn't have pirates later, so I guess that worked. Right. But, yeah, I guess he was trying to double-cross them or something for uh, money, and then, you know, something else happens yeah, later on, of course, he's introduced through song. I think every person they meet uh, somehow gets a song, right? <laughs> and then they get, um, then they get uh, attacked by a sky pirates, which is now becoming a huge trend in the animation. Now, sky pirates are a big thing right really? now. Really, for some reason, yeah. Well, they had on that show Nico and the Sora. I remember when they had the sky pirates and they were all birds and robots, which is also excellent. If you've never seen that mm-hmm. Netflix series, it was so excellent. We watched it twice, right? Yeah, uh, ever since then, now all these shows want to have Sky Pirates, and everyone mm-hmm. has their own version of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were comprised of lots of birds, like parrots, some more like griffins, mm-hmm. or like half bird, half some other animal. And they were like delivery service for the Storm King. Uh, well, that's another thing. They had the Storm King, mm-hmm. but they kind of made it sound like, oh, he was going to be the threat, but he was kind of like a side threat even right. though he was supposed to be the one taking over and he was kind of a goofball he was like <laughs> having lord hater in charge right and the real threat was his i guess you could say his lackey mm-hmm. um who, who uh what's her name tempest right who had this broken horn and like she was pony head right and she was working with them to get a new horn and she was actually pretty a pretty big threat too for not being able to use the horn as well because it, she wor- used it sometimes, but it was really like spazzed out. Right, and she had a lot of issues that grew out of her horn being broken. And they show you the backstory, you tell you why, and so yeah, forth. No spoilers, but um, she was a really interesting character. She was different from any other pony character, probably except for Star Like Glimmer. Right. That someone who's more threatening and is really intimidating. And very powerful. Right. Because even powerful. without using the horn, she was able to take down some people mm-hmm. with her with her hooves. And and she was really in town catch, capturing Twilight Sparkle. But her magic was also still powerful. Even with the broken you um the broken horn. horn yeah. She was still powerful. Right. And they had of course Storm King who looked like some type of giant monkey he acted like right. a monkey because he was all crazy he just wanted to take over he thought it'd be fun right and uh, he had this little thing look like a koala or a leo and stitch experiment and <laughs> yes. he would eat cupcakes and stuff and for someone he sounded like looney cat <laughs> i was listening I'm like why does he kept like saying me? why does it sound like looney cat why does it sound like looney cat yeah, like, okay like either someone on the show watches his videos or they haven't found a guy that sound like him because he's like that. Oh, these cupcakes so good. Like that's the stuff he does. Like they had to get inspiration from him. There's no other person on YouTube that does that. Right. <laughs> and yes, he did. But as soon as we saw him, all you thought of was a uh, Lilo and Stitch and the experiments. He yeah. looked like an experiment. Like he was six two seven or six two eight. Right. <laughs> and then last they had the hippo I don't know what they were. And Pinkie Pie kept thinking it was. Hippo Queen, because mm-hmm. Celestia said we'll say hippo, and she got uh, turned into stone, and she said Hippo Queen. Like, what's a Hippo Queen? Are you sure? He said, Are "You sure you're looking for a Hippo Queen?" Because you <laughs> never really saw anything like that in the show. Right. And then they were creatures that actually lived in the mountains. They could fly like griffins, mm-hmm. and then they had this little magic orb that turned them into sea creatures, so they were like mermaid ponies or something. They lived in the ocean, so they could change from land or air or sea. They could be all three. 
Well, I think what was really great about this movie is there's something for everyone, for every um, Brony and Pega sister, for every person that is um, a loyal viewer. And even if you've never seen the My Little Pony uh, series, you could actually watch this movie because the um, the adventure itself was a movie in itself. Right. You may not be familiar with some of the um, other characters that appear in the beginning, but pretty much anyone who knows anything about MLP knows who the main six characters are who are in the movie. And you can watch this movie on its own without watching the series. But you cannot continue the series without watching the movie. Exactly. Again, brilliant move. And it's it's a joy to watch. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's a story unlike any they've had on the series, which was also very brilliant. Mm -hmm. And... And I don't think there was anything that was a... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, the characters also, they had some great lines as well. You know, Spike was probably... Mm -hmm. We were glad they didn't take out Spike for, for no explained reason. Right. They just You just knew a lot of the characters were gone or taken hostage because of what happened. And you just mm -hmm. had the main characters you've been focusing on. That makes it easier for them to write. Right. And, you know, each they had a song in each time. Each time they were in a new plays, everyone got a little bit of a spotlight to help. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rarity was just on... Cooper. Oh, wow. Crazy. She the was awesome movie. in this one. Yeah. yeah. She would have, like... She has some of the greatest lines of the, of the movie. Yes. And at one point, when they're falling out of the sky, she, she, she just says this one line that's just made me just laugh till <laughs> I cry because it was just ballistically hilarious. Yes. Like, the last thing you would hear her say was something like that in that crazy tone. Yes, and you got to see, you know, you, you watch the series and you see so much of them. They each usually have their own stories and little backstories. But, as you, as you said, it spotlighted them and you got to see some of them in a different light, like additional personality traits you didn't know they had. Mm -hmm. um, it was great. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely great. So, if you have not seen My Little Pony, um, the movie... You really need to see it. Yeah. And there's lots of action. Definitely because of My Little Pony, we got lots of action. It still remains fun. It's really colorful. They got lots of color mm -hmm. for this movie. Animation's great. Great voice talent. Definitely. Um, you got your little sad moments, of course. But all in all, it's a uh, fantastic movie. And what sets up for season eight, which you can, we can tell already without giving anything away, it, it does feel different from the other seasons because yes. of the tone the movie set right. and the character have been slightly changed a little bit which was expected right. honestly so we're just waiting for the next my little pony theatrical movie with discord in it and if you've already seen this movie let us know what you think in the comments yeah so thanks for watching guys i'm Asuka entertainment and i'm mama entertainment have a fantastic day peace Rivers and streams, plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket, give it to you.